we get a number of different questions around this topic, so we decided to address it more generally. Mm -hmm. um, but basically, whether it's asking for Chad's playlists or whether it's asking for like what sort of music that we listen to or what sort of things that we do we use in order to like increase either focus or entertainment, performance, whatever it may be on the mm -hmm. bike. Uh, music. Uh, yeah, so we, we've all recognized that music is beneficial to performance, Life. or at least, yeah, just in the in the training domain, it's really hard not to train with music or to train without music. Yeah. Uh, anyway, we came across an article that that uh, kind of piqued our interest. Looked into it. Didn't really have legs, not in terms of what we're most concerned with. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, cast it aside and did a bit of digging and found uh, a review that does a really good job of summarizing everything that actually does make a difference in, in this realm, in the performance-oriented realm. Mm -hmm. um, it's, a, it's titled Music in the Exercise Domain, a Review and Synthesis, and the authors are Karagoris and Priest. It's back from 2011, and it seems like it might, might be a little bit old, but the one prior to it was 1997, mm -hmm. and all those studies were, of, uh, as they put it, variable quality equivocal findings. So it uh, didn't really have a lot to go on. Now we do. Um, cool. It's a two-part review. Uh, we'll, we'll link to both of those parts, but the nutshell, I'll just, I'll just you know cut to the chase and then go into some details, is that music can indeed exert beneficial psychological and ergogenic effects during during exercise, you know, news to nobody. We we know this anyway, but it's nice to have a little bit of science behind it and take mm -hmm. a look at, you know, why those that why that might actually be. Is it just in our heads? Is there something more to it? Yeah, it's in our heads. <laughs> it, it, it very much is. It is. Nice nice dad joke. Spoiler alert. Additionally, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So um, these guys looked at. I mean, it's a review, so I think it was like twenty-seven studies. It's a it's a lot of studies, and 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 they all had to qualify with certain criteria. You know, they had to have you know certain pool sizes, uh, the ways they measured it, although with something like this is that can be a bit difficult. I'll get to that too. Um, but they looked at four measurable effects. So the ergogenic effects, which is, you know, basically does it delay fatigue or and or increase work capacity. Mm -hmm. The psychological um, effects, effect on mood, emotion, feelings of pleasure, cognition, and behavior. And then the psychophysical effects, which are basically the effect on perception of effort and fatigue. And then finally, the psychophysiological, which is effects on things like heart rate and blood pressure. Of those four, I really feel it's most relevant to us to look into the ergogenic effects and the psychophysical effects. So I limited mm -hmm. um, my notes to that. Although if this is interesting to you in any way, go check it out because huge document, lots of interesting studies, lots of interesting findings. The physiological one too, with effects on mood. You ever oh, in yeah. a workout and then that killer song comes oh, on? Yeah, I can't, I can't uh, underplay yeah. the benefits of the psychological uh, boost you get. Instantly, the watts like feel like it's less. It's yeah. ridiculous. I'm on top of yeah. it now. I yeah, and, and some of the, I mean, the psychophysiological, which we're going to talk about, it integrates It's tied that. together, yeah. Yeah. Or actually, we're going to talk about the psychophysical, but in any case, there's a psycho element of it. Yeah, I find that many times, actually, I've even skipped songs because I know it's so good, and it's like the song you that I need, uh, and I find that I'm like, I'm going to yep. blow my power targets here. <laughs> like, I'm going to go too hard, you know, because I don't train with erg mode, so yeah, I'm just yeah. riding on the rollers, and I find a lot of the time, like, when the song comes on and I'm going well, I'm like, I'm 30 watts over. I need to calm down, <laughs> like, get back in it, you know? So, yeah. Must be nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it that, that happens a lot. <laughs> doesn't. <laughs> okay, so first the psychophysical effects and this is basically how we perceive effort and fatigue, okay? So across studies, there seemed to be agreement on about a 10% reduction at low to moderate effort levels. So when we're not doing a ton of work and I feel like this will go all the way up to maybe sweet spot sort of work. Um <clears throat> the problem is, is measuring this is, is, well, it's problematic. They, they would like to use, or we would like to have scientists use, researchers use uh, fMRI, so functional magnetic resonating, EEGs, uh, respiratory analysis, all these things make it really difficult for people to focus on what they're trying to measure, which is the benefit of the music. <laughs> so they can't, they have to go about it in different ways. And all these studies do, and I won't delve into that. That's again, information that you can seek out if you want to. Can I just add one bit to that? Sure. Like we've, we've experienced that. We've <clears throat> talked about that even doing a VO2 test. It's pretty hard doing a VO2 oh, test with no, that, no, with no, all no, the equipment no. that you've got going on. Any sort of additional process or anything else like that really does. Yeah. yeah. So it'd be hard to, hard to measure that. Yep. Mm -hmm. Um, so back to psychophysical, the, the no significant reduction in RPE beyond <clears throat> when we get to like uh, what they refer to as anaerobic threshold, what we call FTP. So once you start working that hard, the, 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 the RPE changes don't really come into play. Um, and they attribute this to, to the due or due to a command of afferent feedback. So when you think of all the information that comes from the environment and feeds into your central nervous system, that's what we're talking about here. And really they liken it to like a limited internet bandwidth. We can only process so much information. And we've talked about cognitive load often. 
And it's the same, it's it's along those same lines. Mm -hmm. And the idea is is that intensity determines the extent that music can inhibit processing of other sensations. We can only deal with so much input. And if we're already wrestling with trying to hang in onto a very difficult interval, the music doesn't really have as much of an effect as it would at lower lower and moderate intensity levels. Mm -hmm. So at those lower levels, we can actually, we have the capacity to share our, our cognitive processing power, right? Higher intensity, not so much because the physiological goings on kind of dominate our attention. They take full charge of it. However, <clears throat> excuse me, um, music, is, it can't alter our perception of fatigue, but it can change how we interpret or respond to that. So, so these sensations are coming in. We decide how we feel about them. It basically helps us manage the pain and the discomfort that comes with training and racing also. Um, so uh, I've talked many times about productive distraction within the intervals. I see this more as productive interpretation. The information is coming in. We decide how to feel about it. We can decide to make it a bad thing, a negative thing, or a positive thing. Um, so, so really, we're just reframing exercise stress um, because we, we understand what we get out of the workout. So it keeps us hanging in there because we know there will be a reward. Mm-hmm. So we decide to interpret the, the sensations differently. Um, some interesting n- notes uh, along the lines of the psychophysical effects is that um, preferred music versus non-preferred music in high intensity, um, it, th- they reported uh, lower RPE. Mm-hmm. So... When once the once the intensity starts to ramp up, it does kind of matter if you like the music or not, if you chose the music or not. And we've all seen evidence of that. Skip that song. Yeah, like, totally. Totally. You go to someone's class where they're picking the music for you and you're not feeling it. Yes. It becomes of more consequence during the higher intensity work. Mm-hmm. Um, low, to matter, uh, low to moderate intensity levels didn't really seem to matter. So whether they chose the music or not, people were just kind of okay with it. Didn't really affect their um, sensations or their perceived effort and fatigue. I have a question. So at the high intensity... <clears throat> music good or no good 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 okay yeah. That's a, yeah yeah but so so there was there was um lower ratings of perceived exertion because the music was their preferred, preferred. music yeah okay yeah yeah but before we said that it, there was no benefit for high intensity because your cognitive load uh, i don't get how those two am i, I mean I not no but less okay so may re- may phrase that, and and we've got to remember we're looking at twenty seven seven different studies here. So what one study says, another study may contradict to some extent. Mm-hmm. I think it's pretty easy to test yourself. Like I mean, it absolutely one. is, and and all yeah. this we've all done, whether we recognize it or not. We kind of run these self experiments, and we mm-hmm. find the stuff that works the best for us, and we glom onto that or the particular song. Yes, yes, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Mm-hmm. Okay, so as far as the ergogenic or the performance enhancing end of things, um, now we're looking at increases in actual work capacity and delayed delays in fatigue. So. Um, and, and they broke this down, uh, or a number of the studies broke it down into pre-task, in-task, and post-task. So we're talking prior to the workout, during, and after. Um, so preferred music prior to the workout can heighten self-confidence. So there's a, a true psychological boost right there. Every high school football team <laughs> in the country, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, any, yeah. Good yeah. example. Exactly. Yeah. Um, all out, uh, one study did all-out sprints on a stationary bike. Um, and then for 20 minutes prior, they used slow or fast tempo music. And it had no ergogenic effect. They didn't perform any better, but it elevated their heart rate and their adrenaline or epinephrine levels, which indicates an increase in arousal. So they were a little more primed for the work. Mm -hmm. Um, So really, I just see this as both mental mental and physical prep. You know, why not? Why wouldn't you? Mm -hmm. Um, As far as in task, they differentiated between high intensity and once again, low to moderate intensity with the high intensity, different findings, different, different requirements, because again, the cognitive load is so high. Um, the lyrical content can actually enhance the effect of music on performance. So if you're hearing positive affirmations and task related cues, you know, go harder, hang in there, suffer. I mean, there's like, geez, was it a dead dropping? I can't think of the name, but you hear it all the time. And it's kind of repeats this chant that's, that really kind of hits home, especially when you're, when you're hurting. And there are a lot of songs that do that exact thing. Sophia talked about this. She yeah. listens to Cardi B. Cardi B. Yeah. Good, like, yeah. Cardi B takes <laughs> no, it is. Um, anything from anyone. Yes. <laughs> and she was, yeah. And it, it's kind of along the same lines. Like she was like, yeah, I don't usually listen to it, but then when I'm like warming up and I noticed the same thing, like when I'm training, I'll listen to like electronic music and stuff. that's like, and if you listen to those lyrics, they're so ridiculous. Cause like a lot of the time it's just like the yeah. same thing repeated, but 
when you're talking about something when you're coming like before performance or anything like that and it's like a high intensity performance those silly lyrics that are like aspirational and probably over the top mm -hmm. suddenly are not over they, the top they resonate a bit. they resonate yeah. right so yeah, it, yeah it, i've definitely felt that before yep yep yeah and science bears it out or at least one one study did yep um so those habituated to acute intensity so the people who are used to doing high intensity training are less likely to use dissociative strategies and veered more toward o associative so if you've heard that it's, it's kind of an old adage about um, competitive athletes focus on the sensations, whereas non-competitive avoid it. You know, they try to think about anything but. But mm -hmm. again, we've recognized yes. the benefit of it, so we think about, we, we really focus on getting it right and making ourselves hurt because we recognize that that hurt will be productive. That's in, that's interesting. That's like, because a lot of the time I try to explain like the difference between like who uses trainer road and who doesn't yeah. among cyclists. And that's like yeah. one key thing right there I haven't thought of before. It's like a person that doesn't try to distract and run away from the discomfort, but understands the discomfort's productive. Like yep, you this said. is how I describe like, uh, I don't care for what I say, but like a Zoom, a Zuma class, like you're trying to make it so you don't know you're working out. <clears throat> yes. Right. Exactly. And there's a whole set of the population where that works really well. Yeah. But the effect, a workout is not as effective. Our people, like it's hard work. They yeah. don't want to be. They don't want to be distracted and, and fooled. Like they, to, yeah, to, they, to they work this hard, do, you can't. They I mean, want to do exactly. Mm -hmm. When you're getting to this level, you have to just focus on the work mm -hmm. and be inside of the work, not like yeah. doing. And because on race day, you're going to experience that very same thing. And yeah. like, where's the facade then? Like it's stripped away, right? Yeah. So you have yeah. to be able to, to, to face it head on like Strong that. Strong point. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Okay. And then uh, as far as the tempo, slow and fast pop music, um, both elicited superior performances when it came to the max intensity type of work. Mm -hmm. um, so it's the, the, this showed us that it's less about tempo, more about personal motivation. Mm-hmm. Um, then there's the effective, effectiveness of segmentation. So think of uh, like songs that build momentum, um, intervals mm -hmm. that hit when the intensity of the interval and anything that coincides. And it's for this reason that I used to create soundtracks for my bike classes that were very specific. And mm -hmm. sometimes I would even shape the workouts around a song, which was a heck of a lot easier. Um, and and the, the, the gist here is that anticipation heightens the effort when it matters. I mean, just knowing, I mean, like a drum roll into just a part of a song that really works for you. And just knowing that it's coming starts to build anticipation. You start to commit a little more and you get a heck of a lot more out of the, the following work effort. Um, Can I share my one of my favorite songs for that? For the <laughs> dubstep? Sure. No, <laughs> it's Rage Against the Machine. Oh, yeah. Sleep Now yeah, on the Fire. Exactly. That they, song. I use the heck out builds, of those guys. Builds, builds, builds. Oh, my classes. gosh. Oh, yeah, They've got yeah. it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, They're okay. super good at that. Yeah. It's one of the best ones for building for me. Um, and then <clears throat> this was interesting, too. Uh, slow to faster <laughs> tempos led to okay, higher work <laughs> rates. Hey, hush now. I'm sorry. <laughs> slow to faster tempos led to higher work rates than purely slow or fast tempi, which mm. uh, I love all these fun plurals. <laughs> um, so, so rather than a song that stays slow or rather than a song that stays fast, it was these changes in tempo actually enhance motivation and increase work output. Mm -hmm. Right. So, so what this shows us, uh, and this this was especially uh, prevalent when levels plateaued during later stages of an exercise. So, I mean, you kind of get numb to it at some point. You kind of lose track of if the song just sounds consistently the same. You're doing high intensity work. You need that variety. Or th these guys report that or report that you do benefit from that variety. Mm -hmm. Just changes in tempo are enough to keep us physically or uh, psychologically engaged. And then when it comes to low to moderate intensity, um, the, the majority of the studies linked clear improvements in endurance performance across the board. There wasn't a whole lot of uh, disagreement there. They did find an ideal BPM seemed to be in the like 125 to 140 range. That's BPM of mu beats per minute. Yeah, beats per minute. Music. Yeah, so even yeah. though you're not pedaling that fast, and this, this uh, is a point I didn't really touch on, but there's uh, this uh, disconnect between the, the beat of the music and uh, – in our case, it'd be RPM. So mm -hmm. you don't have to follow it to actually benefit from particular beats. In this case, 125 to 140 seem to be workable for most hard uh, to across find. these studies. <laughs> hard to find really exciting <clears throat> music at like 90 BPM, something, you know, something yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah kind of get that. Yep. Yeah. Yep. I mean, then familiar views, music versus non-familiar music when it came to low, moderate intensity stuff, again, no significant effects. It's like people cared less. It's just, they just wanted music. Um, and music did show a capability in lowering heart rate, blood pressure, and perceived exertion. And I think this is what they attribute the increases in efficiency. It's like, how can you possibly get more efficient by listening to a song? Well, if it brings your heart rate down, brings your blood pressure down, you're, you're doing the same amount of work for less physiological stress. So an increase in efficiency. 
And then uh, music's ability to lessen perceived exertion can have a pronounced effect on the program's success. And, and what are we all about but adherence? We want people to do every workout. We want them to do each workout as successfully as possible. And if music can enhance that possibility or increase that possibility, it's a win-win. Mm -hmm. And then really briefly, when it came to post-task, um, they showed that sedative music correlated with lower cortisol levels in one study about five minutes after the workout, which means music can decrease arousal too, which post-workout can be a very good thing, especially if you're working out later in the day. Mm -hmm. And then again, I'll reiterate, there are a whole lot more findings in both parts of these. We've, we've linked to them, and there's the, the, both those papers are rife with information. So if you have an interest in learning more about this, um, check it out because there's lots in there. This is something that I do, and let me know if there's any science back this, but sure. turning the music off during the rest period. Yep. Because then you get that change in tempo, right? Yeah. You don't get otherwise you get desensitized. Yeah, so yeah. yeah, it touched on that as well, and that's something that we can absolutely relate to. Because if you just bomb yourself with music the whole time, even during those recovery valleys where you're trying to get away from the stress and trying to mentally reset, it can be pretty difficult. Mm -hmm. Cool. Uh, can I ask a couple practical practical questions about what we do for music when we ride? Sure. Uh, so, uh, firstly, we'll just talk indoors here. Um, what headphones do all of you use? Oh, I've switched. This mm. is, um, I really like these now, the Apple AirPod Pros. Okay. Uh, Air, isn't that right? Yeah. I think that's what they're, yeah. Yeah, the AirPod Pros. More isolating. Mm. Because, yeah, they're, uh, the noise canceling works well. And other noise canceling ones, when the fan hits me, like this, the wind yeah. was like super loud. Yeah. But these don't have that. Nice. So I can't hear my drivetrain while I'm working out, which yeah. is pretty cool. Awesome. Um, and I've switched to the Al AirPods the regular AirPods when I forget the AirPod Pros and uh, because I had those two and they're not as good. So the, mm. that's what I like. Yeah. Cool. I still use the Shure eBuds, it's S-C-H-U-R-E, uh -huh. because they have the only fitting that really nests in my ear canal. So so the, the shape of the EarPod or not EarPod, the EarBud, and then the little fittings that go on it, they've been the only brand that consistently closes out all the exterior sound well enough that I can keep it at re reasonably low volumes and still Yep. feel moved by the music. They're, and then I, they had, they came out with some wireless ones too, that I'm experimenting with right now. And I'm, they're promising. Same design. Yeah. Yeah. Eh, close. Okay. Uh, the, the fitting that goes into the canal is similar, but okay. then of course it's got the big old bulbous thing that has to sit in here, but it's so far so good. It's, it's closing out the exterior sound pretty well. So those are the best headphones I've used for isolating outside noise yeah. like that without any sort of like noise cancellation. Uh, this yep. is just passive. Same. Um, they're really good for that. And Jaybird for a while made wireless ones that yeah. were shaped just like that. And they worked really well. I have those and I like them. <laughs> and then they ended up and they don't sound as good as the Shures, they but, don't. but they, they ended up like frying and then I, they didn't make them anymore, which really stunk. So mm. I have their um, Jaybird Run XT, and I don't love them. I always have to adjust them because they're too big for my ear, and they're mm. just wireless buds, just kind of like the AirPods, but they fully seal out sound or are supposed to. It's a they, lot of trial and error to find ones that yeah, are just right. But they have some new ones. I, I do not like ones that have any sort of band that goes on my neck, mm. sort of bridging between the two, because I always find that that ends up because when I'm training, I'm moving my head and neck around, and I end up it ends up like pulling slightly because I get sweaty and, and it grips. So I like fully wireless earbuds for sure. Um, I'm going to try the new Jaybird. I they have a new one. I can't remember. Vista, I think it's called, is the new one I'm going to try. I think mm -hmm. Tucker's going to put the link in for those. Uh, I've heard that they go into the ears better. So uh, if anybody else has ones that isolate really well, like AirPod Pros or anything else like that, um, uh, you should share them. Go to forum.trainerroad.com to episode 244. Also, when I'm outside, I don't, uh, the only time I will use music is if I am on a gravel ride on roads where nobody else is there. And I only use one AirPod <clears throat> or one little, little guy. And that's just because for me, the safety aspect, especially on trails, I don't like using headphones on trails just because I want to make sure I hear everything. And when you're talking about anything with variable surface, like hearing is your warning system to traction, right? Like that's like y y what you hear is directly tied to what your tires are doing on the ground and hmm. your bike's ability to perform. So when you isolate that, you don't perform as well. One last thing I wanted to pitch and just kind of get your thoughts on Chad. I know some trainers, uh, within, especially like the enduro space, they actually don't, some coaches don't, that I know of, don't let their athletes listen to music. And they like say, don't listen to music at all oh, sure. because on race day, you won't have Cause music. Cause they're developing a crutch. Is the, yes. Is the idea. Right. 
And and I personally don't agree with that because I feel like on race day my arousal is super high. Yeah. And in order motivation to motivation high. In my motivation side. Absolutely. To, it just shifts. And I need that help. Yeah, you can't conjure that. that sort of motivation inside for every workout. I mean, maybe you can get in touch with it every once in a while, but it's not going to be a consistent thing. Music, however, can be. I, I feel, would yeah, I feel the same. I would argue that you are never motivated in training like you are in in person race. For sure. With sure. Fifty so people use around you. Whatever so race. whatever tools at your disposal when you're working out yeah. then, why not? Yeah, because all of that is going to elevate your performance potential, like what we're talking about here. And if you perform at a higher level, that means more adaptation, right? Because that's the point of training. So, so it's it's not it's uh, and I yeah I don't see the crutch side. I feel like it evens out. I, I wish it evens out because on race day I don't need any music. I'm hyped. The only downside I can think of is if you <clears throat> blare it too loud, hurt your hearing. Sure, sure. Just make sure you yeah. don't do that. And that's why I like the ones that fit in so well because you don't yep. have to play them at very high volumes. Yep, mm -hmm. absolutely. If you like this video, make sure you give us a thumbs up. If you didn't like this video, you can give it a thumbs down, but let us know what you would have done differently in the comments below. If you want to see more of these videos, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. And if you want to become a faster cyclist, check out trainerroad.com. Do it. If you think I have better hair than Jonathan, give it a thumbs up. If not, leave a comment. My hair is better than his.